Hi guys, now the aim here is to give you a quick run through uh, topic A1, which is types of work and drawings, which is under unit 9 of uh, BTEC level 2 engineering. Now, what are work and drawings? Work and drawings are drawings that are used to make parts. It will contain all the information that you will need to make the part in a workshop. The first type of work and drawing is a component drawing. Now, a component drawing would um, show you how to make a single component. Now, most drawings will have this uh, template. You will have your title block here. And here you have information about the materials to be used. Uh, on the drawing, you have the physical dimensions. Um, and also, if there's any special finishing on the surface or so surface finish. And maybe if you have threads, um, if you have um, if you have if you have to thread holes, you have information about the thread sizes and so on. Um, for each drawing, you need to consider the features, which are these, the advantages and the disadvantages, and also the applications of the drawing. Now, component drawing, the advantage is that it will contain all the information you need to use to make that part. The disadvantage is it will not show you how different parts go together. So, if you have more than one uh, component that need to be assembled together, you won't get that information on the component row. As you can see here, you've got holes here for a bolt, but it does not tell you how to assemble or to bolt this part to another part. Now, assembly drawings would show you how to assemble parts together. So here, you have information on all the parts that go into this assembly. So you have on assembly drawing, you must have more than one part. The giveaway is this title block, which will tell you uh, the, the number of the parts. So one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Uh, how many of each part go into the assembly, what the description of the part is, and um, what material. Um, you might have that on the assembly, uh, assembly drawing as well. Now, when you look at component or assembly drawings, you need to, there are two different types of the, the orthographic projection. Orthographic projection is the style of drawing a component on assembly in three views. So you have a front view looking at it from the front, a top view looking at it from the top, and a, 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 and a side view looking at it from the side. Now you have two types of orthographic projection. You could draw a part in first angle projection or third angle projection. Now the key is knowing the four quadrants. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, if you draw the front view in quadrant one, it's called first angle. This is the first angle, second angle, third angle, fourth angle. Then once you draw the um, the, the front in the fourth, is first angle. If you draw the front in the third, it's third angle. There's no second or fourth angle projection. Now, once you've drawn the front in the first uh, angle, in the first angle, then you draw the top under it. So you look at it from the top and you draw it here. And then you look at it from this side and you draw it there. So as you can see, it's in like a seven. On the third angle projection, you put your front here. You put your top, what you see from the top, you draw on top of it. And what you see from the side, you draw on this side. As you can see, it looks like an L. So that's first angle and third angle projection. So in everything you need to understand, uh, for every drawing, characteristics, advantages, disadvantages, and applications. Same thing, characteristics, advantages, disadvantages, and applications. You could get questions on any of these areas in a, an, a, a Unit 9 exam. So types of drawing lines, these are the various types of drawing lines that you will use when drawing a component drawing, an assembly drawing, or any type of orthographic projection. So you can get questions on these as well. Now, also you might get questions on um, countersink and counterbot. These are symbols that can occur on a drawing. So any type of symbols on a drawing you could get questions on. Now. The difference is, you know, counterbore, this is a bolt, so you need to drill it and then counterbore at the top to create a profile like this. So that you can, ha if you want the bolt to be flush on the top. If you countersink, that means that you drill it and then use a, a, a countersinking tool to create this triangular portion to be able to fit in the neck of the uh, screw. So these are the sort of things you get on the drawing. Now, this is 
a plate. This is countersunk on the top, so we're looking at it from the top. This is count. No, this is countable on the top because this is the this is the countable signal. Sorry, this is countersunk on the top. As you can see, this is the countersunk symbol, the V. This is hid, this is a hidden line. So that means that you cannot see the countable from the top. So it must be countable on the bottom of the plate, and that is countersunk. No, this is countersunk. Sorry, as you can see, it's the V, and this is counterbore. As you can see it's got this uh, symbol to it. So you might have something like this with just the symbol or it might even say countersink and counterbore. Now when you have you might also have questions where you have um, numbers on. So this is telling you drill to this diameter and to this depth as you can see it's got an arrow on it and then countersink it to this diameter and to this angle. So drill to this depth at this diameter and then countersink it to this diameter and to this angle. So it's an, this is an angle 90 as you can see. Also in an examination you would have, uh, you might have some questions on PCD. This is an actual exam question as you can see it's got pitch circle diameter. Now if you're drilling holes around an imaginary circle then the diameter of that circle is called the pitch circle diameter. So as you can see, these holes are five millimeters apart, but the pitch circle diameter is an important dimension because they have to fit around this circle, and that is your um, PCD. Now this is an actual exam question. It says four holes, one, two, three, four, equally spaced with a pitch circle diameter of 20. So that means between one hole and the opposite hole, there is a distance of 20. Explore the diagrams. Explore the diagrams are like assembly diagrams, but they're not assembled together. An assembly diagram is it, showing you how it all couples together, what it looks like after it's fitted together. Explore the diagrams show you all the parts in an exploded view. It's just blown out. You can see every single part that goes into this thing. Whereas if you assemble it, you will not be able to see some of these parts because they'll be covered up. Now, once again, you need to know the characteristics of, of uh, expl the exploded diagram. What are the features of it? Uh, what are the advantages of it? It shows you every single part. What are the disadvantages of it? You know, it's not always necessary for to have an a. a uh, it's not always necessary to have an exploded diagram, and also, it doesn't show you how it looks like when it's coupled together. It doesn't show you how each of these parts uh, are, should be made. And applications, of course, you know, when you have complex parts with many hidden parts, it will be a very good diagram to use. Circuit diagrams are electronic, so all these electronic symbols, and a circuit diagram will show you how it all fits together. So that's a transistor, and that is a resistor, and that's a buzzer, and that's a 55 timer IC. So this is good for connecting electronic components. On the other hand, wiring diagrams show you how, where to fit the actual wires. So this is a ceiling rose and it shows that the live wire goes in here and it needs to be connected to the live wire, uh, the neutral wire from here and the live from here. So it a circuit diagram, the, a transistor doesn't actually look like this, but there's a symbol of a transistor. In a wiring diagram, this is how a ceiling ro rose looks. So it, it's just for connecting, you know, lights this is a scenario for or it could be connecting a machine if you got if you have to install a machine and connect a machine as a technician a wiring diagram is important because it will show you where the different wires are going to be connected to now autographic projection is for 2d drawings now you have three two types of 3d drawings you have your isometric drawing and you have your oblique drawing you can see part of the top, part of the uh, front, and part of the side. Um, and that's because it's at an angle. So you're always looking at the corner in an isometric drawing. In an oblique drawing, you're looking at the front, and the side is drawn to 45 degrees. It's not drawn to scale. You just you want to see the front, the full glory of the front, but the side is just drawn 
you know a, a slant of 45 degrees so you can see that it's got a, a side to it and it's got a top to it